give it just a second before they come in here. again. Good evening. Good evening. Glad to see all of you here this evening. I guess tonight you're going to be stuck with me and Al. So. Don't tell them about me. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. Just me then. Just me. <laughs> all right. We're going to start with uh, 453. 453. We'll sing the first and third verse. Let's sing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to no more, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else. Good help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be saved too. song, our invitation song will be 939. We'll sing the first and fourth verse. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, we had an interesting day. We have been here all day, so that's rare. Uh, we got here this morning. The dumpster came this morning. And uh, we were able to clean out some, getting ready to renovate that first office building, office room, down the hallway. And uh, so, if it smells like dust and sawdust and all sorts of things, that's why. Progress. Progress. There you go. I wanted to talk to you tonight, and, and if you're wanting to open the Bible and look with me, look at Exodus chapter 8. We're going to look at this story when Moses was attempting to free the Israelite nation based on what God told him to do. And the ten plagues, we have a fun sort of a... I guess it would be called a wrap for the ten plagues to help us remember it. And uh, But the one we're going to focus on is frogs. And so we're going to read really quick just Exodus chapter 8. Let's start in verse 8. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may sacrifice to the Lord. Moses said to Pharaoh, Accept the honor of saying, When I shall intercede for you, for your servants, and for your people, to destroy the frogs from you and your house, from you and your houses, 
that they may remain in the river only. So he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Let it be according to your word that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God. And so they went through this process, and Moses pleaded, and the frogs were gone. Uh, God killed them or had them, you know, however God did it. And then they piled them up and it, and it said it stank. And it stank. And the land stank. <laughs> so uh, I can only imagine how much thousands possibly of frogs, uh, maybe, maybe tens of thousands, I don't know how many frogs, up in a big pile would smell. I imagine it'd be pretty bad. But that's not the point I want to focus on. The point I want to focus on is, is it just happens so fast you don't even realize what happened. And I looked at it in about six different versions to make sure. But I had heard of a sermon that someone did, a full-length sermon, based on basically this one concept. And the sermon title is One More Night with the Frogs. Okay, so it, as you read this story, Moses, you know, Pharaoh asked Moses to come and take, take, get rid of these frogs. Please, I plead with you to plead with the Lord to get rid of these frogs. And Moses, if you, if you understand what's happening here, Moses looks to Pharaoh and says, I'm going to give you the ability to choose when these frogs are gone. Do you want them gone tonight? Do you want them gone whatever? Whatever it may be. Do you want them gone now? And Pharaoh chose to have the frogs gone tomorrow. Is that not weird? Why would he not gone, make them gone today? And yet, how many times in our life do we want to keep putting God off one more day? Or keep putting off something that we're doing that we know is wrong because we want to live in that. Or we don't want to feel like we're letting God have us or be in control of our life. Or maybe you've got a friend that wants to help you and you say, just, no, I don't want your help. Just one more night with the frogs. And that's basically what Pharaoh said. This misery of having frogs, you know, it, it tells you where they're going to be, basically how it's going to happen, in their kneading bowls, you know, in their beds, in their houses. Can you imagine? It's horrible. Uh, I've had, when we lived in Florida, we had lizards really bad. All the time, lizards just were everywhere around our house. And so occasionally one would creep in the door or a window seal or something like that. And you'd be chasing lizards around your house. Well, this isn't one or two, maybe thousands in each house, hundreds at least, I would think, in each house. And Pharaoh says, you know what, I'll just wait till tomorrow to have these frogs gone. I mean, Moses gave him the choice. And again, we think it's crazy. But I think Pharaoh was proud. Pharaoh had his own wants and he didn't want to bow to God. He didn't want to give up his own authority, I think, is probably what it was. Too proud to say right now, I can't stand these frogs. Get them gone now. And you know what? I'll just wait till tomorrow. How crazy. And we do that kind of stuff all the time. I'm going to wait to stop sinning this particular sin till tomorrow, till I'm older, until I'm a grandparent until I'm an adult. We give some timeline to ourselves that we're going to stop doing these things and live for God. And are we really that different than Pharaoh? And so I just thought that was an interesting lesson. One more night with the frogs. And I just share a little bit of that with you from Exodus chapter 8. Are you waiting to be right? Are you waiting to let God be in control of your life? Are you waiting to become a Christian? If we can help you in any way, won't you come now while we sing together? Oh, do not let the word depart And close thine eyes against the light For sinner, harden not thy heart Be saved, O oh, to 
tonight. Oh, why I not tonight? Oh, why not tonight? Will thou be saved? Then why not tonight? Our blessed Lord refuses none. Who to him their souls unite. Believe, obey, the work is done. Be saved, oh, tonight. Oh, why not tonight? Oh, why not tonight? Will thou be saved? Thank you, Chad, for that. And Anthony gave me a long list of announcements tonight. Uh, to start off, he had uh, David Sampson. It says, going to St. Vincent's in the morning for a second opinion. That is uh, Jesse's son and... I'm not sure exactly the situation that's going on there, but remember David in the morning. And also, uh, if you read the Vermont app, we heard that Jesse Sampson fell this morning. And if I remember right, let me go and read it so I know it's right here. Jesse yes, Jesse fell this morning, or I think I'm pretty sure it was this morning. She, I know that she broke uh, a few places in her arm. She broke her nose and I think her eye socket as well. She was going to Fort Payne and then she went to Erlanger, but they brought her back because her face was too swollen to do anything today. So they said she has a lot of tests in the near future. So just remember her, but she is back at, uh, is it Serenity? Is that the name of the place? She's back at Serenity right now and her arm is in a sling at the moment moment. Um, some changes we have. Uh, our third Sunday evening singing will be moved to the 24th and we will not have a birthday celebration because that was last month. Um, changes for December 31st, that is a Sunday. Our morning service will be the same, but our Sunday afternoon we will host for the first time the fifth Sunday singing. It will be at 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and this will take place of our evening service. And then also come back at 7 for our annual New Year's Eve celebration. Al, I don't know. Do we have food for the first thing at 2 o'clock? No, yeah. no. No no food at that one? No, we do not. But we will have food and games at 7. Okay. Um, the ornament. Yes, on New Year's. We get a little competitive. I know you will with ping pong, so I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, ornament exchange will be December 24th after the morning service. And the last one he has on here, uh, the Daisy's Place collection for monetary donations and items will continue through December 31st. Uh, is there any anything else that needs to be announced? Ma'am? I thought we were doing the Daisy's Place in January. We're taking it. We're taking it. Yeah, take it January. The donations are through the 31st. Is there anything else that needs to be announced? Yes. Yes. The ornament exchange, you need to put it in a bag or a little wrapper of some sort because you're not supposed to know what it is until okay. you pick something up and you don't know what it is. So put your ornaments in a bag so no one else can see what they are. Right. Is there anything else? Okay, if y'all need anything else to be announced, just let me or Andy know. Uh, we'll get it up there. Uh, our last song before we are dismissed to our classes is 957. 957. It's in the first verse. What number? 957. All right, let's sing. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can feel at home in this world anymore oh Lord you know I have no friend like you if heaven's not my home then Lord what will I do the angels beckon me from heaven's open 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for watching over us. Thank you, God, for another opportunity to come here to sing songs to you and get to hear another great portion of your word. And also, God, we're just so thankful for each and every family that's here, that's represented. Um, I pray that you please be with us as we continue to our classes, that we can learn something new, and that we can bring it out into the world and be a lot in the world. I pray, God, that you please just continue with us. God has scars protect us. Please be with those that were mentioned this evening, and just watch over those that are in need. Thank you most importantly for your son, Jesus, and it's in Christ that we pray. Amen. Amen.